keep that guard tight even when you go for a punch. Also a little tip try to contain your electricity it packs a bigger punch when you land a hit. Like a double tap. Deku nodded as he went for an uppercut that Izuku caught easily with one hand what he wasn't expecting was for Deku to wrap himself around his arm like an anaconda vise. It didn't hurt Izuku that much but it did confuse him. He then fell to weights around his legs causing him to look down and see Tetsu and Kirishima holding his legs down. He was about to pull them off with his free arm when Siro's tape wrapped around it causing Izuku to look and see Siro, Shoji, Sato and the hairy guy from 1B struggling to keep it away. Izuku smiled at the plan as he saw Monoma running at him and he saw Glint behind Monoma which showed Momo with a trank gun. Monoma touched Izuku with a smirk as he powered up OFA and went for a punch but didn't do any damage confusing him but Izuku smirked as he headbutted Monoma dropping him to the ground with a broken nose. Momo shot the trank but Izuku used his past self as a meat shield causing Deku to slump as he fell asleep. Izuku with his now free arm tugged the tape pulling the heavyweights off their feet. Izuku then grabbed both Tetsu and Kirishima by the throats causing both them to activate their quirks to their ultimate moves that didn't bother Izuku as they just continuously slammed them into the ground like a pair of dumbbells. Momo shot another trank but Izuku used Kirishima as a shield and dropped the two lookalikes while sprinting at Momo. Momo kept trying to hit Izuku but he would just dodge while he steamrolled any student that tried to get in his way until it was only Kaminari, Uraraka, Bakugo, Shoto and Momo. Bakugo did the AP gattling, but Izuku would easily avoid the shots or use pieces of concrete he tore from the ground as a shield. Shoto tried to freeze Izuku's legs or get paw shots with his fire but it was useless as he took a roundhouse to the face sending him into a car unconscious. Kaminari was also easily knocked unconscious after he tried to sacrifice play with his million volts attack. Izuku just went in the air ignoring the electric current. Momo surrendered after she saw it was pointless making Izuku disappointed. Bakugo unleashed everything from his grenade gauntlets to several howitzer impacts making the city looking like a war zone. However, Bakugo finally fell from exhaustion causing Izuku to sigh in disappointment since he thought this would be more fun. He avoided a punch from Uraraka and returned his own punch but it got blocked by a floating rock causing Izuku's eyes to widen as he avoided another punch. Izuku backed up and smiled proudly as he saw dozens of small rocks floating around her like a protective shell. They started brawling with ever punch Izuku threw was easily blocked by a rock but the rock would blow to smithereens every time Izuku landed one meaning Uraraka only had limited amount of hits she could take. One thing that made Izuku happy as they traded blows was when she went for a punch that missed she pushed a rock out of her orbit like a missile hitting Izuku straight in the sternum making him chuckle at the pain. Izuku. So she learned that she can manipulate her gravity to go in reverse it took Achako two years to figure that out. They kept brawling neither landing a real hit until Uraraka collapsed to her knees trying not to puke making Izuku stopped as he went to check on her until she looked up at him with determination as she put her fingers together in her signature pose. Uraraka, release. Izuku looked up and his eyes boggled as he saw a portion of a building come crashing down on him. He looked down at Uraraka to see how she would avoid it but she just smirked at him with a knowing look causing him to growl as he picked her up and tried to avoid the falling building. He did easily but he felt his chest a little colder causing him to look down to see Uraraka made a giant cut with a sharp rock looking at him with a shit-eating grin. The bell sounded signaling Izuku had lost causing him to sigh as he heard loud cheering as he put Uraraka down. He couldn't help but smile anyway as he saw the classes lift Uraraka up in celebration even with Bakugo and Shoto participating. They truly would be a shining beacon of heroes in the future. It's a shame he won't be there to see it. Narrator POV Two buses could be seen stopping in front of a facility where there are hundreds of teenagers all in their uniform looking nervous with even more buses stopping to drop off more kids. What was special about these two buses were two things. The giant letters painted on the side showing UA and the occupants of the buses. One holding class 1 and the other 1B. Izuku was in the 1A bus sitting next to Aizawa in civilian clothes. He was offered one last time to participate but he ignored the request and said he would be there just to watch. After they exited the buses the exact same thing happened with the other schools scouting out UA like in his time. But to prevent any awkward encounters he went straight to the spectator stands leaving Aizawa to give the pep talk. There wasn't that many spectators allowed this time. All the spectators were put in a suite-like room which had camera feeds everywhere of the testing ground but the main camera was an interview room making Izuku confused. Later on once all of the examinees and spectators were in place it was explained to Izuku that the exam was completely changed by both the inspiration of Izuku's memories and the ideology of All Might, instead of a cleansing of the weak like his exam in the past. Future. Anyways, the first portion was instead a written morality test followed by an in-person interview with the interviewer being a mind reader so they can know if they lied. It seems the government finally realized a great combat quirk doesn't equal a great hero or loyalty. The written test was sent to the spectators via a tablet so their teachers could also see their answers plus the interviewer. The questions were simple just what would you do in certain impossible situation and sometimes they would add more to the scenario like who was with them quirk wise. The small details of the situation like how much longer until the building's collapses or how long the fire has been going on and also how many civilians there are in the building and what the villain can do. 
The final question was a simple one, what is a hero to you? Izuku looked over the many written tests, and honestly he wasn't impressed at all. Some of the cases when they were given teammates most just sent their teammates to do the hard work for them under the excuse they needed to calm the crowd, while others that did come up with a plan were all terrible and would fail miserably if tried. The interviews weren't any better with 90% of the candidates just straight up lying even though the questions were just what they thought of things like quirkless or villains. Honestly severely disappointing and it showed how flawed the hero system was before. They couldn't even honestly say why they wanted to be a hero. However, one kid stood out to the proctors and it was a green-haired child who had a bright smile through the whole test and interview. His written test was perfect with every scenario most likely to succeed out of all the examinees and would either result in no casualties or minimal casualties. The interview was even better with him not lying once and always giving a genuine answer based on his belief. Truly this was the next symbol that Japan needed to emerge thought the proctors. Soon the examinees were taken to a briefing room reminding Izuku of his time in the entrance exam. The proctor explained the situation while each examinee looked at a tablet that had several options on it. The proctor explained that they will each pick a classification of what type of hero they want to be since that is a part of the new agenda of the Reformed Hero Association. The options were combat hero with the subclasses being frontline, support, crowd control, the next option was rescue hero with no subclasses and then finally was the night prowlers. Individuals who will basically only do night patrols. However, there was a last option slightly separated from the others and said nothing but hero. Soon the examinees were quickly choosing their roles most egos to high to realize they were making the wrong choice. Almost 95% of the examinees choose combat hero. 80% of those choose frontline. Even though almost all of them didn't fall into that category they knew that's where all the high roller heroes are usually located so big bucks in the future. Deku stared at his tablet for a little and decided to take a risk as he clicked the hero spot. After a few minutes staff entered the auditorium and started handing out gauntlets with screens on them showing a small hut. Soon a greeting appeared and showed a list of objectives different for each individual based on what hero they picked. As everyone looked at their new accessory the main screen came to life showing a map of the fake city. The proctor cleared his throat as he began to explain the situation. The city exploded behind him in multiple locations making the examinees flinch in surprise. Proctor, a terrorist attack has hit the city with bombs causing many buildings to collapse and has started uncontrollable fire that is slowly consuming more buildings. Due to the chaos the villains in the area are taking advantage and have either decided to help the terrorists or loot the city. Your job is to restore order to the city and repel the terrorists and villains. The way you pass is through both your own individual effort and a collective effort. You each have objectives listed on the gauntlets we gave you with them revolving around the class of hero you pick. Once your objectives are complete you are guaranteed to pass. Good luck. The doors to the city will open in 15 minutes. Anyone that picked Night Prowler will stay here until the second phase. The Objectives Combat Frontline Defeat 10 Villains Don't exceed $20,000 in damages Protect 1 Civilian Combat Support Defeat 5 Villains Can't exceed $50,000 in damages Help 3 Frontliners Combat Crowd Control Defeat 20 Villains No damage allowed Help 10 Civilians Rescue Stop the fires Establish a point of security Establish a medical area Establish a vac zone for the civilians Establish a haven for the civilians Save as many civilians as possible. Night Prowlers. Keep the peace. Stop as many crimes as possible. Protect the Haven and its facilities. Deku looked at his gauntlet and saw he had all the objectives of every single category. Then it finally clicked in his head a hero before had to do whatever the situation called for not like now where it seems certain heroes can only do certain things or will be called for certain things. Deku took a calming breathe as he realized this will a long exam for him. Deku was half right. You see the new hero association wanted to test how efficient the new payroll would be for heroes so the objectives for the test could be seen as in quota but they always wanted to see who truly had the heart of a hero. Izuku in the stands was actually pretty impressed with the changes the association came up with. The morality portion alone would weed out a good portion of the examinees but he also saw the trick of the practical almost instantly. He knew the practical would wipe out the fakes immediately making him happy. It's a shame most of UA will most likely fail. The bells rung and the doors opened signaling the heroes were allowed to enter the trial. Which they did but the first strike already occurred as the heroes pushed each other out of the way racing towards the villains even some attacking each other in frustration. The spectators sighed in disappointment as the test was already turning into a complete train wreck. Luckily Yue, Shaiksu, the girl academy that I forgot the name of, and Ms. Joke school stayed as a unit as they went to their locations but even then the next major flaw showed itself. There was hundreds of combat heroes most of them probably frontliners while left behind in the mess of a city was a handful of rescue heroes. As Deku was running towards the front lines he noticed this and barely for a second he though about which was the right choice before running towards the lost rescue heroes. Bakugo looked back while running towards the front lines but just scoffed as he blasted a villain. Deku stopped in front of the panicking rescue heroes and quickly looked them over. He recognized Yuraka, 
Gyro, and Shoji besides them there was only five others all from what he could tell were all from different schools. Deku inspected the area and nodded his head as they should be a decent spot. He quickly told Yuraraka to start clearing the street of debris so they could use the four-way intersections as the haven, security point and medical area. Yuraraka didn't even question him as she quickly started moving the rubble. Deku then ordered Shoji and Gyro to start searching for survivors and to mark them on their map gauntlets and he'll pick them up. The two nodded as they ran in opposite directions. Deku looked down as he already started to get pings on his minimap. Deku turned to the remaining five as they all had nervous looks on their faces. Deku quickly asked for their quirks and what they do. The five looked amongst each other before they reluctantly revealed their quirks. One boy had the power to manipulate water as long as he had a source but he uses it for too long he could gain brain damage. The next boy had the ability to mold earth into any form he wanted the only stopgap being his imagination and how much earth he has access to, however it requires much concentration. The remaining three were girls the next was a petite girl who said she could make a dome-like field that can make any person in said dome feel whatever emotion she wants. As long as she is calm the dome will stay intact, she can only do two emotions at the same time. The next one had the ability to heal any wound she could as long as she had the stamina and the next had the ability to restore someone's stamina at the cost of her body fat. Deku thought a plan in four seconds before he started ordering the five what to do. He told the water user to combat the fire and broke a fire hydrant giving him the water he needed. He ordered the earth user to make a wall at each street of the intersection making four walls each touching the buildings on the corner so they could have more space. Once that was down he needed to make several medium-sized medical tents in the middle of the haven and then make several small buildings for the uninjured to take shelter. He told the emotion girl to make a dome of calm and hopeful emotions to keep the civilians happy. He told the healing girl to heal anyone that came in and the stamina girl to give the healer stamina. The five looked reluctant if they should listen to him but Deku's smile just radiated follow me. So quickly the five each went to do their assigned task with the water guy trying to stop the fire spread since he knew he wasn't strong enough to completely put out the fires. The earth guy was slowly making the haven with a bulge on his head as he manipulated the earth into what he wanted. The emotion girl put her hand on the ground slowly make a yellow dome surround the construction of the haven with slight effort. Deku nodded in happiness before turning serious as he powered up to 45% full cow. Deku blurred through the city taking out any stray villain he came across, tossing rubble aside as he saved another civilian, using a car as an shield to protect its civilians, taking out more villains, carrying more civilians on his back, tossing villains aside while protecting civilians and doing it all with a smile even if he looked gruff or got a little cut he always kept the smile on his face. Deku dropped off the last civilian and went to help the water guy who he found struggling with the fire and who was drenched in shit and had a large bloody nose. Deku landed next to him and clapped his hands making a large gust that completely snuffed the fires. Deku caught the water guy before he collapsed and started to bring him towards the haven. As he was making his way he noticed more and more villains were making it through the front lines and that's when noticed more and more of the heroes just stopped fighting or just leaving. That's when it finally hit Deku and caused him to grow angry. Deku, they stopped helping because they reached the quota. Fucking, I'll forget it. I'll handle it. After Deku dropped off the water guy he knocked out any villain that even got close to the haven. After he saw Yuraka starting to hold off some villains with Gyro and Shoji, Izuku started to spread his fighting further knocking villain after villain out, causing a certain boss villain to smirk as she started to bounce towards Deku and dropping some dual hair to mow to the ground. While Deku dropped another villain to the ground he felt something in the back of his head scream at him to dodge which he trusted and did barely avoiding a super kick to the back of the head. Deku backflipped and got into a stance as he couldn't help but get nervous as the boss villain started to cackle and bounce in place. The woman had her white hair tied in a ponytail while wearing casual workout clothes with visible restraints on her wrists and ankles. Deku noticed the ankle ones were way bigger than the wrist ones. The previously number 5 hero Maruko stared at Deku with a crazed smile causing him to gulp. Maruko, I never got to get my rematch with your future self so I guess you'll do for now. Get ready boy because here I come. Maruko bounced and launched herself at Deku aiming for a dropkick at his face with him barely dodging with a tilt as the buzzing in back of his head going off again. What he didn't expect was for Maruko to flip with the landing and use the nearby building as a launch pad. And going for Deku again but with a roundhouse to his neck forcing him to block but still get sent flying down the street. Maruko chased after him while laughing as she went for an axe kick to his face forcing Deku to block again but this time he was able to brace himself with full cow 45%, causing Maruko to grin as she felt the thrill rise in her spirits. The two clashed with a kick as they started to brawl throughout the war-torn city with Deku subtly lead her away from the haven and undamaged city. Maruko noticed it but didn't care even though as her job she was supposed to, she was having too much fun with this kid. Every kick that landed on Deku made his bones rattle and ache but he didn't care he needed to win, for all might, for mom, for Yuraka. He can't let them down. Deku powered up to 50% as he charged at Maruko landing a kick to her stomach surprising her as she got launched across the street. 
She corrected herself in the air instantly as she started yanking the restraints off with a crazed smile causing Deku to slowly raise his percentage as he caught his breath. Maruko, you're different. I can feel it. All these weaklings couldn't even make me care let alone sweat. Hugh, you are worth the effort. You are different. The two clashed again fighting throughout the city as Maruko was going all out while laughing wildly and Deku just barely holding his own even at 65%. He may have been way stronger than her however experience and skill-wise Deku almost stood no chance. The only reason he's lasted this long is because of that buzzing in the back of his head and his own stubbornness. As Maruko was about to land the knock blow on Deku the bell rang signaling the end of the first exam, causing Maruko to scream in frustration as Deku flopped to his knees in exhaustion. Bakugo and the good portion of heroes that returned to the briefing room after they completed their objectives couldn't help but feel small as they watched the fight between Maruko and Deku. Bakugo felt his ego take a hit as he started to grind his teeth and clench his fist in anger. There was a 30-minute grace period given before the night prowler portion which Deku used to take a nap and heal his bruises. Luckily the two girls that were on the rescue squad healed his wounds and restored his stamina. He thanked them but they just shrugged it off and said it was the least they could do since they knew they would have lost without him. The dome of the arena was closed and the lights were turned off besides the few that were in the city, making it seem like they were actually patrolling a city in the dead of night. Deku saw he had even less teammates now with it only being Shinchu, Takoyami and that guy who is pitch black in 1B. Deku quickly made a plan where Takoyami would guard the haven and its surrounding streets while Deku would take the north and west side of the city, Shinchu the south side and the last one on the east side. They quickly agreed with them separating and promising to contact if they needed help. The prowler portion wasn't too bad considering Deku was just zooming through the city knocking out any villain he came across. Soon, the exam was over and the examinees were taken to the auditorium where the big screen lit up and showed the results of the passers while the proctor looked at them with a neutral look. There were hundreds of names with a good portion of UA cheering as they saw their name. Deku felt his world crash on him as he didn't see his. Bakugo couldn't help but smirk as he saw his on there and not Deku's. The cheers and murmurs were interrupted by the proctor clearing his throat. Proctor. As you can see this is the list of names of the people that passed past if this was the old exam and hero system. You see the old exam heavily favored the people with flashy or strong quirks maybe both. However, as evident by that future viewing from a few months ago we realized flashy and strong quirks don't equal a great hero or a loyal one. So, he decided to test something in this exams whether a hero would stop being hero once they reached their passing objective or a paying quota. The results were unfortunately exactly what we expected. Here is the only people that passed the exam. The 458 names that were on the passing turned to 19, making the temperature in the room drop as hundreds of people just watched their names get erased. Deku looked up with tears as he saw his name appear at the top but for some reason was in gold. He saw all the Riku heroes with him, a few names he didn't recognize and all the Night Prowler heroes. Besides that, those were the only ones who passed. Proctor. These are the only people that passed the exam and in our eyes the ideal hero we had in mind. For the rest of you, some of you could still become heroes in the next exam just take the time to look at yourself and find where you went wrong. While most of you will be reviewed if we should even let you become heroes, you will receive a letter in the coming weeks telling you which category you fall in. Before I dismiss you all, Izuku Midoriya can please make your way up to the stage, excuse me the present one please. Deku gulped as he slowly made his way up stiffly before standing awkwardly next to the proctor. Proctor, Izuku here choose the final option hero which not a single other person choose. You probably all thought since it didn't have a fancy title like frontliner or support it must be useless. You see if you choose the hero option you would have to accomplish every single goal of the other categories essentially an impossible task but that didn't stop Izuku here. If anything he exceeded our expectations. The reason he didn't pass the first time was because he was to perfect something the old hero association would have never allowed since it would have conflicted with the image that no one can come close to all mine. However, we are not the old hero association we are better. Now here is something for completely the hero category and more. The proctor handed Deku a license with him looking at it with thanks until he read the title and he just looked back up at the proctor with a shocked look. The proctor just patted his back and smiled as he looked to the crowd again. Proctor. Due to the fact Izuku completed the hero category and did it with immense skill, strategy and technique. Instead of the normal provisional license he should get instead he will receive the full hero license. He still has to attend hero school but now when he interns he will be considered a psychic instead of an intern and get credit for his deeds. That is all for the provisional exams you all are dismissed. It was a blur rest of the day Deku him celebrating with Yuraka and the few that got a license while the rest just silently sat in the bus depressed with their failure. Bakugo just kept his eyes on Deku the whole time clenching his fist in anger as he felt himself snapping. Izuku watched from the corner of his eye and couldn't help but sigh in disappointment. Narrator POV The last chapter The day after the exams Izuku was on a roof looking at the arguing Deku and Bakugo in one of the fake cities. Unfortunately, it seemed they were going to fight just like he did with his Kakan. A shame he wasn't going to let it happen as they were about to charge Izuku appeared between the two making them stop. 
Izuku, go inside now, no one's fighting today. Also probably should have picked a different day besides the same day I had my fight. Bakugo, not until he fights me. He needs to prove to me he deserves that power and not me. Izuku, he doesn't need to prove anything. He isn't All Might and he won't be me. He will be Izuku Midoriya, the hero Deku. It's not like you would even survive if you got the quirk anyway. Bakugo, huh, you don't think I could handle your baby quirk. Izuku, it wouldn't matter how well you could handle the quirk. You would have died probably not even a couple of years after getting it. If OFA is given to a person that already has quirk I will shorten their lifespan dramatically especially if that person had a strong quirk. OFA was meant to be wielded by quirkless people which is why me and Deku here will be the last users. Izuku looked at Deku and saw he had a terrified look on his face from the news, causing Izuku to panic. Izuku, oh, uh, don't worry Deku you'll still live a long life. I hope. Izuku, now back to you Bakugo. This is your last warning if you don't stop this and change your attitude. You will never be a hero or anywhere near the top. Bakugo lunged at Izuku with rage but got bitch slapped into a wall embedding him into it with shock. Izuku walked up to him and just looked at Bakugo with disappointment. Izuku, Bakugo I know you saw my memories of you beating me but you don't know the context. I wasn't 70% or 90%, nowhere near 100%. I was at 8% and you barely won and even then I was holding back. What makes you think you can take on Deku here who is pushing 70%? Humble yourself Bakugo if you ever want to be a hero. Not long after Aizawa came and delivered his punishment to Bakugo which was the same as canon. Deku didn't get it this time since he didn't do anything. But Aizawa did say he was on thin ice causing the young man to gulp in fear. Izuku sighed in a tired manner as he went back to his room to sleep. Izuku just watched as the time passed with Deku doing his sidekick gig with Mirko which he thought was pretty funny since he would come home with a new bruise every day and a scared expression. To Izuku's delight Bakugo had actually taken his words to heart since he actually has calmed down significantly and even seemed to be trying to mend his relationship with Deku. As the time passed Izuku did only a few things spend time with Iri, help the class with their quirks and even help some of them with general training. He only does the training for a couple of months since he doesn't want them to be over-reliant on him which is why his training with Uraraka ended after the exam. Speaking of Uraraka the next thing has been driving Izuku crazy. The fact Deku and Uraraka still refuse to acknowledge each other's feelings. He knows they like each other and he also has a feeling they know the same about each other. So, he doesn't understand what's so hard about it. Was he this dense and was Uraraka really this stubborn because seriously this was starting to get annoying. He tried to subtly push them together but either Deku was too dense or Uraraka caught on too fast. So right now that was on the back burners of his plans. Soon Nabu Island came with Izuku going with Iri as both a chaperone and him on a vacation. Mostly the vacation part. Since Deku had his hero license he was charge of the whole thing. Izuku spent of the time at the beach or amusement park. He met Katsum and his sister and luckily the island doesn't have much access to the outside world so they had no idea who he was. He didn't interact to much besides change the sister's view on heroes. He mostly just forced Iri to socialize with them making her annoyed. The whole time though on the island Izuku was making Uraraka and Deku closer without them ever realizing it. He did it so well. Izuku was pretty certain Deku was head over heels for her and the same with Uraraka. Now it was just a matter of time before they got together. You wonder how he did this simple. He just kept making fake crimes every time they were in the same district. And the searching for a criminal that didn't exist turned into the two of them on a pseudo day. Time continued to pass with the change of the weather as snow started to fall along with Christmas decorations. It's been almost a year and a half since Izuku arrived in the past, and honestly he felt it was close to his time. Soon Christmas came and Izuku watched as everyone laughed and celebrated exchanging gifts. Yuri was even smiling with the others as he had spent some time making her socialize with the others. Izuku saw Deku bring Uraraka outside causing him to grow a soft smile since he knew what was going to happen. Sure enough after a little while they both came back in with large smiles as they announced they were officially dating. Everyone ran to them and started congratulating with Izuku taking a long sigh before laying on an armchair. Thump. Izuku took a deep breath as he felt himself lose feeling. He looked at his right hand and saw his ring finger starting to crack in blue light as pieces started to break off and float up before turning into blue particles. Izuku patted Iri's head with his left as he hid his right in his pocket and said to go celebrate some more and he'll be outside to get air. Izuku stepped outside and sat on a bench not far from the dorm since he felt weak. Izuku pulled his hand out of his pocket showing it was already at his palm still cracking and slowly breaking off into more blue particles. It didn't hurt but it did make Izuku feel scared as the feeling just disappeared as more and more cracked and disappeared. The front door busted open making Izuku jump and turn to which he saw Mina looking around before smiling as she saw him. Mina, Dekaru, we wondered what happened to you. Come inside Denki brought out Uno. Mina came running to him and stopped when she saw the glowing blue cracks running up Izuku's arm up to his elbow and the particle decay at his wrist now. Mina screamed in horror alerting the rest of the class as they came running out to the side of a dying Izuku. They quickly went up to him in panic as they checked on him. Momo, oh my god, D-A-K-I-R-U, what happened? Hiroshima, Ida go get recovery girl and the staff. 
Hi Ida, right. Deku, come on me. We have to get you to recovery girl. They tried to pull Izuku up but he didn't budge and instead just nodded his head now. As his legs started to crack as well slowly turning into blue particles at the tip of his toes. Izuku, it's okay guys. My time is up, no point in making a fuss. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy but he just raised his uncracked hand as an signal to give a second. He sighed and began to explain. Izuku, I'm from a future that doesn't exist anymore. And since it doesn't exist, neither should I this was always going to happen so don't be sad or worry. The realization dawned on the smarter ones of the group which quickly got whispered to the rest of the class until they fully understood what Izuku said. He was going to die. Aida had returned with staff and the situation was quickly explained causing many to grow sad. Shoto, wouldn't that just create a paradox? Momo, yeah. Since you came to the past to change the future, you being erased from existence would just make a paradox and cause our timeline to not exist and start the cycle again. Izuku chuckled as the cracking reached his shoulders and knees. Izuku, that's what I thought too when the god told me the deal but from what he explained that's not how time works. Imagine a straight line with an arrow as my timeline. I went back making a new line that came out of mine taking the arrow with it. After a certain point when this timeline passes the old one, the old one will simply decay into nothingness allowing the new timeline to prosper on its own without any complications. So no you don't have to worry about any paradoxes. However I stayed here any longer I would have caused both timelines to collapse on each other since I was the only anchor left keeping the old timeline alive. This was always going to happen. Deku, did the god trick you? Izuku, no. No quite the opposite actually. He made sure I understood what was going to happen to me before I accepted. Flashback. Before you accept fully, I need to at least tell you what will happen to you. Izuku, what? Once you change the future to much you will start to disappear into nothingness. It will feel like you're empty and weak. The way you can truly tell is when you start to crack. Once that happens there is nothing you can do. However, I feel nice today so you don't have to worry about the timeline change too much since I will freeze your timeline until you are satisfied with your changes. However, I can only hold it for two years or I might risk losing both your timelines. Izuku, I see in what happens when I disappear. It'll be like you never existed, your timeline, your home. Everything will cease to exist at the cost of saving this timeline. Now, I will ask one more time. How much will it cost to save a world? Izuku, no matter the cost. I see. The god unfroze time and allowed Izuku to leave which he quickly did as he ran to the explosion. Good luck hero. End of flashback. Izuku, by the way I'm not telling the catalyst that started this. I know you would just try to change it. So, this will be our final goodbye. Izuku smiled as the cracking started to cover his up to his neck. Izuku, Iri be a good girl for me. I love you and will never stop loving you. For the rest of you be the best heroes this world has ever seen. They nodded with teared filled eyes as they tried to remain strong. Izuku just continued to smile as finally stopped holding back the cracking. He closed his eyes as the cracking consumed him and he disappeared into blue particles. The class broke down as they saw the last of the particles disappear into the snowy night sky. Izuku opened his eyes to a white void causing him to grow confused. He looked around and just saw endless white that went on for dot 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 he couldn't tell. It felt like there was no end nor no beginning. Was he dead or something else entirely? You truly are an interesting person Izuku Midoriya, no matter the universe. Izuku, it's you. And it's me. Truly an interesting way of changing the future. Another you decided the villains were worth saving yet you saw them as unredeemable. Truly fascinating. Izuku, did it work? Take a look. The hooded god waved his hand making a small window appeared which showed an even older him standing on podium that said number one along with many other of his classmates around having different ranks. Izuku just smiled in relief as the window closed with the god facing Izuku now. Izuku, so what now? Do I go to the afterlife or something? Unfortunately that doesn't happen to souls from dead timelines. Don't worry your friends and family died before the erasure so they're safe. However, you will just cease to exist I'm sorry. Though I do have an offer for you if you're interested. Izuku, I mean anything beats being nothing. I want you to join my time patrollers. The job is simple you fight people that try to mess with time illegally and watch over time. Izuku, let me guess you want me there because I'm super strong. Humble I see. Nah, you probably be average there in strength level but not everyone has the heart to do what is necessary like you do. So, what do you say? Izuku, I, 